And we're pleased to be joined on the Ray and Dregs Hockey Podcast by Marc-Andre Fleury, who is with the Minnesota Wild in Seattle, uh, ready to take on the Seattle Kraken. And Mark, I want to take you back to Wednesday's game, all right? Now, you, you weren't in the net. Philip Gustafson got the start there and, and the win for the Minnesota Wild. Trevor Zegers tries that lacrosse trick play. And, I mean, I was impressed. He did it while skating on the fly, but it's called back on the offside challenge, so it doesn't matter in a bigger picture. But as a veteran goaltender, a star goalie in the NHL, where do you stand when it comes to these lacrosse type <laughs> of attempts? Oh, geez. I, I don't know. Looking back at it, it was, a, it was pretty amazing how quick he actually uh, got around the net and put it in, right? Like uh, Goss, a goalie, yeah. they just got uh, time to get across, get a foot on the post. And, um, in my head, I just kind of wish I can come around and slash a guy off fire. <laughs> it's all I've in mind. It's tough to defend, right? Yeah. But, I don't know. Maybe if you get a couple of guys cleanly, then maybe don't try again on you. But uh, obviously, it's a very skilled and, and nice goal. You, you've been in the league now, you know, almost 20 years. Like, has has it been as noticeable the way guys shoot the puck? Like, was it quickly noticeable to you? Like, how much better they shoot it or how differently they shoot it or a player like Zegris. Um, like, did you notice right away and you're like, Oh man, this is, this is getting different. Yeah. Uh, I think the one piece stick was a big, uh, big game changer. And then uh, they, they kept getting better of it and uh, better flex. And I feel like before maybe like the third, fourth line, nothing against them, right. They were like great players also, yeah. but I feel like with the wood stick and uh, it was more grinding, maybe a little more, a few more fighters. Right. Um, Dump and chase, hitting guys. Like some guys had great shots, right? Like heavy and and hard. But nowadays, like everybody shoots. You know the the D coming in. You know everybody's got a great wrist. Or the fourth line guys, they can snap the puck. You know, barring in. And um, yeah, I think there's definitely a, a difference. Near the end of my career, uh, I remember one of the goalies saying, "Yeah, the worst part about the one piece stick is now the guys that can't score." They shoot it so hard and yeah. they hit you in the chest and it hurts. <laughs> it hurts, yeah. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah, a few more bruises, I guess. Yeah. Hey, uh, so so Mark, you've been you've played for for so long. Um, I'm really curious, like as the as your career's gone on, like how, how do you how do you evolve? How do you change? How do you do you change the way you train and the the way that you might work in the summer or the way you practice and I mean, it can't be the same as when you were 18 years old. Yeah, I think uh, it has changed, has evolved. Um, with, with the game, is it harder? Uh, I feel some mornings are harder, definitely. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, I don't know. I feel like it's more about being mobile, flexible, um, uh, I don't know, re- reliable to be to be healthy every day. You know, sorry, my phone's yeah, yeah. Um, but like summer, maybe it's not as heavy as I used to, right? Got to, so mm-hmm. I don't get hurt again or anything like that, right? It's just about keeping the body healthy and still, um, and keeping that throughout the season. Um, yeah. I uh, I told this story before you were on about you know I was bugging you in warm up the other day because you have those great yellow pads on or gold whatever you want to call them they look so good I can hardly <laughs> wait to see them with the with the reverse retros and. And you're talking, you're starting in game, and then you go, oh, I got to go because all the guys are standing around waiting <laughs> to shoot. Like, when did that, when, where did that attitude, like, you've got such a great way about you, even when you're playing. Every goalie I played with, you couldn't talk to for a day. It, like, it was like crazy. Like, how, how did you develop that? Um, I don't know if I developed it. I just, I just go out and play, you know. I, obviously, I, I love the game. I love playing. Um, I love talking about goalie gear, right? <laughs> to you on the board there, so it's that's why I get caught and forget about warm up, you know. But um, yeah, I don't know. I I just feel like sometimes I've tried, you know, over the years, try to be more serious and more be more uh, in my bubble kind of right. And I don't know, it just doesn't suit me. I feel like I I play better when I'm relaxed and having fun, and um, that's when I have the most success. So do you? Over your career, have you ever sat there and watched your partner get ready for a game, whoever it might be, and go, "Wow, he's got a lot of things to think about." <laughs> <laughs> like he's he's really serious. Yeah, yeah. Some guys, right? Yeah, I, I've had that. Like you're not too sure if 
if you can talk to him or how much you can say, right? But um, I just find like it's a long season, right? A lot of games, a lot of yeah. a lot of prep. I mean, if you're, I don't know, to me, it seems a lot, you know, to do this every game and and being so serious, you know, for so many days in the year. Yeah. I mean, you're talking about your career, Mark andre Fleury on the Rain Dregs podcast. You turned 38 years old later this month. Um, you've got another year on your contract after this year, of course, in Minnesota. Have you given any thought to the possibility of, of playing as a 40 year old <laughs> or where's your headspace at? Or is it going to be, you know, a month to month thing as you go into next season? Yeah, I think that's more likely what's going to be like. Um, you know, I'm yeah. very grateful that you know, again, another year, another year uh, on the contract, and um, I think I'll see, I'll see when this one's done. Um, I'll feel a lot of things, you know, and um, I, I don't like moving my kids to, um, you know, they've done like three schools yeah. in three years now, so they're getting yeah. older, you know, it's not, it's not fun for them, and it's hard for them, so um, you know, I gotta think about them too. But I'm I'm lucky. Like Isn't I played so long, right? for many years, right? Yeah. I I still love it. Still love what I do and stuff. So I'm very grateful for that. Isn't it interesting? Like the the time of your career, where you need stability because of your married, family, kids, school. You don't really have the stability. Yeah. The time you've got it is when you're 18 and 19. Yeah. And you could just <laughs> you don't have any luggage anyway. You just could move anyway. Yeah, yeah. It. it isn't it just an amazing thing to be lucky enough to play that long, but see how your because your, your life completely changes once the kids get to school age. Yeah, definitely. I think it's, uh, you know, you don't have just yourself to think about, right? And your, like your hockey bag full of clothes and a hockey bag full of gear, right? They go into from <laughs> hotels to or whatever, right? So it's, um, yeah, definitely more to take in consideration and, um, you know, not that I've been selfish, but I, I feel like I've fulfilled, you know, my drill, my dream for so long, right? I'm very uh, lucky for that. So um, I don't want to be selfish, you know, moving forward either. Hmm. Now, you last year, you, you come to Minnesota and you're with Cam Talbot as your goalie partner. And, um, you know, for cap reasons or, you know, they, they move him to Ottawa and you get Philip Gustafson back as a partner. So now you're you know, you're much older than your goalie partner. Again, there's a, a lot of talk about how many games can you play? How much is comfortable? Like, what is it like, A, to be, to have a goalie partner? Because you guys are our, you're our, your own little team there. Like, yeah. you know, we all like you guys and all that, but you are your own little team. Yeah. And how much, how much is good for you to play? Like, is it a couple of games a week? Is it like, how do you, how do you come to that? Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's a tough question. I don't think I have like a set number, you know, like for the season or week per week. I think it's depends on the schedule and the travel, um, how much you're moving around, how it's going, right? I think you still want to be, uh, still mm-hmm. want to be good and stuff. So, um, but I don't know. I think we go one week at a time, pretty much. You know, we'll see what's what, what we got ahead, and um, still feel good, still feel healthy, right? So, um, yeah. I don't know. I'm not too worried about the number. Whenever the coach tells me to go play, then I'll be there. Then you go play. Yeah. Now, last night you got to watch, well, today's, um, I don't even know what today, today's Thursday. Thursday. So Wednesday, yeah. you watched uh, Philip Gustafson play, played, played great. Yeah. Um, uh, what do you, what do you do when you are not playing? Like you're watching Gustafson the game. Like, first of all, you guys go almost two periods again without scoring. And you're like, oh, it's going yeah. to shoot it in the net, right? <laughs> like, how stressful is it to you just to watch? Um, is it worse than playing? Yeah, I would say so, yeah, a little bit. Because I feel when you play, you're just, you know, you're in the game and you start to stop the next box. So you're always busy, right? Like, uh, it's always easier. When you're just watching, I feel like you're more... Uh, on the edge of it, right? Every low play is like, oh, oh, you know, I get a little more emotional. But, um, but again, though, it was it was fun watching him. He, like you said, he had a, an awesome game, kept us in all night, and um, it was fun, fun to see boys <laughs> celebrate after their, their first goal and the next few ones, right? So, um, it's good to be on the bench with them cheering for, for those goals. Now, you've played with Hall of Fame players, guys that are going to the Hall of Fame, and you know, and um, and now you're with another special guy in Kirill Kaprizov. Um, what does he look like? Uh, I mean, not to compare him to Malkin or to Sid or Patrick Kane, but he he's in a different level. 
when when he plays like do you, do you feel that as well i mean you yeah. would be better served than to tell you know than my mm-hmm. opinion on that oh definitely uh yeah i think he's up there with those guys you know i think he's uh loves the game first right in practice always around trying to score low goals after drills and stuff you know he loves to play um always built to his strong is always low you know um low to the ground like he's so solid he always shifts and turns or he gets around guys like it's it's not the tall, you know, tallest guys, but it's a little bit like Sid, right? Like, That's okay. You yeah. can be short and be good. Yeah, That's exactly, okay. like right? That. Like, you know, like he's <laughs> stocky and he's quick, you know, good hands, good shot, right? So I think he's got a, a total package going for him. So we promoted on social media and other means that, that you were coming on the Rain Dregs podcast. And, and some of the feedback we got was, what's the deal with Marc-Andre Fleury and Brendan Gallagher? Like, is... <laughs> Is, is 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 Galley just one of those guys because you're a goalie? I mean, yeah. most goalies feel the same, hey, right? See, that's he's nice. always in there and he's... Yeah. Oh, he was a pain night last night, night wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. Vancouver. I mean, but, I mean, you're not having any of his shenanigans based on what we've seen. I mean, you blockered him not that long ago, which enraged him. And then there was another dust up in the net. Yeah. I mean, is he just one of those guys that because he plays that way, goes hard to the net, that you know he's going to kind of get in your uh, get in your grill when he can? Yeah, definitely. You know, I've, you know, we've played against each other a few times by now, right? I've seen him go, not just on me, but yeah. on different guys, you know, so... Um, but then I see him, I say, hey, how you doing, man? What's up? Like, he's just talking, right? But then, like, he comes and charges in the net, gives him a little stick, a little battle, falls in the legs. You know, he's pretending to fall on you. It's just like, oh, boy. But I don't know. I think it makes it, uh, still makes it fun, though. Yeah. But no, man, no he hard is, feeling, uh... though. I feel like, you know, you play, like, I try to keep him away and make him mad sometimes, but he does the same to me. But um... Now, does he pull, does this, does he pull this? Uh, Mark, does he after he falls on you? Does he always apologize as he gets up and kind of push on you? Because uh, I I used to try and do yeah. that all the time. Oh, sorry about, <laughs> sorry, that. Sorry about and that. And then, <laughs> yeah, just so um, the guy wouldn't hit you with his blocker yeah. and you try to get the hell out of there. Good thinking. Um, I don't think he apologized. Uh, not much, though. But I, I, he should. He should. Maybe. He should. He's always in there. Man. Always, yes. But that's why, like, I don't really get mad at him, you know, because it's it's expected, right? And like I said, I yeah. see him around the ice and hey, what's up? <laughs> you know, like, yeah, doesn't bother me. But doesn't bother me too much. Okay, so one thing that got a lot of play this year, which has been just awesome, was you taping Sid's equipment into a into unreal. A First of all, <laughs> the effort. To, you know, that was a lot of work to get that all into the ball with all the tape and stuff. As someone that really enjoys that stuff. That was a hell of an effort. Oh, thank that was you. Really good. <laughs> we should have, um, thank you. Now, where did that st- how who who started pranking who back in the day that this needs to continue? Because yeah. I, I get the feeling you're gonna win this at the end. <laughs> you will go one step further than he will. Oh, it's said to me. Yeah, yeah. Um I don't know. I feel like we like has he got is he got you pretty good that yeah, you need to get him one, back one time though. No, was in Pittsburgh. But I feel like when we played together, we didn't bug each other as much, you know. But play against each other, you know. Sometimes like the the other teams, like they bring their uh, their stuff in the locker room to dry, right? But the teams yeah. at the hotel or you practice before your team so you can get in their locker room and then screw with their stuff, you know. So those little things I like. But one time in Pittsburgh, though, he had um, he tied up on a rope under my car, a bunch of like cans and like bottles, right? So then I drove like all the way, like, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes from the practice meet to my house, downtown Pittsburgh, and it was just like, <laughs> ding, 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 <laughs> in the back, you know? I was like, oh, you know. Um, yeah, he's, he's a good sport about it. He likes it too. The, I, I loved that when he came in and as soon as he saw it, he's like, he knew. He knew. He's like, damn, I should have got here on the first bus. Yeah. And that, that was just... <laughs> you got ahead of it. now what's what's another favorite flurry prank what's another because you must have you don't have just one like like did, yeah. did you do you like you gotta have something. something i don't know i usually i don't i try not to make guys mad you know just little things uh keep it light till they laugh a bit but um 
<laughs> I don't know. The furniture in the hallway, yeah. that's got to be on you. Yeah, that's on your table like too, one. isn't it? Yeah, I really like that yeah. one. I think it takes effort. Maybe a couple of teammates to help you out. Eh? Um, yeah. but I like that though, because then you have to sneak and get the, somebody's room key and get in the room and, you know, still everything out of there. Uh, if you don't have much time, though, I like to go and just do like a tornado. You know, you put everything everywhere. Big, big palace. Yeah, stuff, that's right? a good one yeah. too. Yeah. Um, I don't know. They've like, taken laces out of shoes or at the rank. It's just I don't know. Quick or what I like to sometimes is. It, oh, okay, so here's one for you. Maybe now, you you've got a couple of teammates that aren't very tall. Yeah. So you know how they put the helmet up on top. Yeah. Is they used to do this to me. They nail my chin strap to oh, the top. Really? That's a good and so one. I've never seen when I I go knock my helmet off yeah. and it just spins around up there. Now I got to climb up on the thing to get it down. It was, oh, I oh, sour every time yes, they did it. I'm gonna try that for sure. Thank you. Yeah, it's it's really good. It's because nobody ever thinks you just you know how you knock yeah, your helmet down to put yeah. it on. Yeah. And it just goes yeah. spins around. It's oh, it's fantastic. Awesome. It's one of my favorites. Did you have like, the glass of water too, like on inside your uh, helmet so when you pull that it out, on the shin pads? On the shin pads, the pads yeah, out. and then it comes on you. Right? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Just a little one of the <laughs> one of uh, Larry Robinson, Hall of Famer. Where one day you're going to go to your ceremony to the Hall of Fame, and you'll meet Larry there, and it, like just an amazing guy. But when he was coaching us, he used to take a little pin and poke it in the styrofoam cups of the coffee and then he'd put them in the coffee, you know, the stack yeah. of cups. So randomly some guy would get that cup and then they just... they'd fill it up and it just springs out like all over their clothes. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, it's another good uh, one. Another Mark Bergevin did that too. He taught me that one a little while ago. He was good. I think he's my first, uh, he was my first roommate. So I think it was their first. Oh, one he was. Yeah. So he taught me that. Like, oh, uh, you you didn't go to sleep now. first, no. did you? No. <laughs> There's always something there. Oh, but yeah, he taught me uh, good stuff. You know, just watching him every day, little you know, little jokes here and there. But yeah. I'm going to put you on the spot here. Yeah. One of your teammates, Jake Middleton, was on our was on our show last year. Yeah. And he tells this story about how when he got traded, he couldn't go from San Jose to Minnesota right away because he didn't have any luggage. Okay. You know, he didn't own anything. So he had to go buy a piece of luggage. I'm like, well, what were you going to take your clothes in? He says he doesn't have any clothes, really. He's got, he buys a couple of t-shirts, one pair of jeans, and that's pretty much it. Have you, one is suit, this something yeah. you've noticed with him? Like, does he need, like, Not really, he, yeah. he's got a new contract. Tell me he's got new shirts or something. I feel like he looks decent too. Yeah, it's a couple, you know, some good, some good suits and yeah, I don't, yeah, because he couldn't even he couldn't leave. He said he had to go to the mall to buy a. <laughs> you got to like raise this year, though, Ray. You got to raise this. <laughs> yeah, year. yeah, you got to get a few more t-shirts or something. I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll look into him. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, report yeah. back. <laughs> All right, Mark. We'll uh, we'll let you go with this. Uh, thanks very much for being a good sport, taking the time while you're on the road, and best of luck to All you right. and uh, the Minnesota Wild for the rest of the season. Thank you very much, guys. Nice seeing you. We'll see you tomorrow. Hey, thanks for coming on, Mark. Right, no See you tomorrow. Very good. Have a good day. Bye. Take care.